All right, now we're looking at Euler's method. This is a way that we can approximate differential equations numerically. Uh, this is a really good method for using computers because they can, they can break up intervals into lots of little subsections and uh, compute them numerically, uh, incrementing each time. So what we want to do first of all, this is actually the definition up here, but we'll get to this in a minute. What we do is we take a differential equation in this form. We have dy dt is equal to some function of t and y. And also we need the initial conditions, so we need to know what uh, t0 is and then what its corresponding y0 is. So uh, what we can do is we have, say we have some solution curve like this, this blue line, and we want to approximate what the value is at this capital T. You know, at some, some point we've defined. Uh, and so we can make this interval from t0 to t. t0 we would choose because we were given it in the problem. And then we can, we can choose this capital T to be anywhere at the end of our interval. We could have put it here if you wanted. I just drew it over here. So what we do is we define, we divide this, uh, this interval from T0 to capital T into n subintervals, all with equal length. Uh, and we call that length or their width h. And so you can just simply find that by dividing the, uh, or subtracting small t from big T and then dividing it by n. And you'll also notice that the the length, again, um, or the, these iterations on the, the t-axis will be, you can find out where they are in the t-axis. ti is equal to t naught plus i times h, where h is the width. Okay, so how this works is, you'll notice that we have y prime is equal to some function at some point. That means that we know this point, it was given to us in the problem, and if we know at this point, uh, it's basically, this is an expression for its slope because this is dy dt, that's y prime, that's its slope, and we have something that it's equal to. So right away we'll be able to calculate uh, what the slope at this line is, and it'll give us some point out here which is pretty close to the point that's actually on the curve. Then when we get to this point, we can substitute in the new, the new point, or the new coordinates, and repeat the process, and again it'll give us a new slope uh, that will take us up to here, and we should be pretty close to the line, and again we just keep repeating this process of calculating the slope from this line and going out a distance of h and then trying again. And obviously the more intervals we have, uh, the more accurate or the closer this will actually be to the true solution. So this is kind of the, the long explanation of what we're doing over here. Uh, I wrote this before so you guys didn't have to just watch me write out all these integral signs and stuff. But basically we just have the expression y prime is equal to the function of f of t and y. That's over here integrate both sides. Um, and what we can do is, after we do that, we can make this approximation here where I drew these blue lines. See we have this is equal to, and then the next step becomes approximately equal to, um, because we can make this assumption, this isn't always true, but we can make the assumption that uh, when t naught and t1, for example, are really close to each other, then we can say that they're pretty much or approximately equal to each other, similarly with the y's. So uh, assuming that these in, uh, these uh, subintervals are quite short, then we can make this assumption. So this becomes approximately equal to, and then again we just uh, finish off the integral and we get uh, y at t1, which would be here, this point, is approximately equal to y0 plus h, the width, times the function of t0 and y0. So this is the function evaluated at these points. So basically whatever you have in this function, you would just substitute in the value of t0 and substitute in the value of y0 where appropriate and then just solve that, multiply by h, add it to y0, and then we'll actually approximately give you this value. And then you'll notice, so this is where our actual iteration comes in, so we have y at i plus 1, in this case we were dealing with um, our initial condition was i was equal to 0, so then we were looking for y1. If so that's this guy. Uh, now what we can do is you can see that if we did it for the second, the second point, y2, that would be equal to y1 plus h times, now the function is evaluated at t1 and y1. Then you see that for, if we want to solve for the point at y3 or y at t equals 3, then again you have y at 2 plus this stuff, uh, h times function evaluated at t2 and y2. So that's what happens, That's maybe you can see the pattern now, we have y of i plus 1, so say i is 2, then this is 3, then we have yi, i was 2, so it's 2, and then you see h times, you know, i's would all be 2's. So this would work for any any of these subintervals. And if you wanted to solve up for this point here at t, the end of your interval, uh, you would just have y at n. And so we would have y, y of i plus 1 is equal to y of n. 
So then that we'd actually have our i's here. This y of i would be y of n minus 1, and t of n minus 1, y of n minus 1. Because this guy here would be n minus 1, and this guy here would be n. All right, so that's just kind of the overview of how this method works uh, without actually doing an example. You'll see when we do an example in the next video that it actually is quite straightforward. It's sometimes the general, the general introductions are a little arbitrary or uh, a little kind of weird to wrap your head around without seeing the actual numbers. So join me in the next video and we'll do an example and it should make perfect sense.